Nelson Mandela standing inside the cell that once held him prisoner. And Mandela walked out of prison with a lesson for living, saying to walk free is not merely to cast off chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. And he did something behind those prison walls that was a kind of dress rehearsal for what he would do later in the world. ABC's David Muir now one-on-one -on -one with the jailer who became his most unlikely friend. Christo Brand peers out over the water to the former prison on Robben Island, where he first reported for duty at 18. They informed us that we're going to meet the biggest criminals in the history of South Africa. Nelson Mandela was 60, already in prison for more than a decade, still forced to sleep on the floor. The young jailer's family was Afrikaner, the party that famously and fiercely supported apartheid. But when that young jailer met Mandela, he met an elder who would treat the young white man with respect, and the jailer would slowly offer the same in return. Christo Brand told us of one of Winnie Mandela's visits and her request. She said, please, can I just show Mandela from a distance? I said, no, 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 just leave the child. No children allowed, not even Mandela's precious new grandbaby. What Winnie Mandela didn't know was that while she waited in a holding area, that jailer had secretly brought the baby to Mandela. She was just tears coming out of his eyes. And no one ever knew? Nobody knew. Over the years, there would be many secrets between the jailer and his friend. The whole wheat bread Christo would bring from home, the pantene oil smuggled in for Mandela's hair, and there was the secret code. I will show him this, and I will just start showing him this. Mandela immediately know I'm bucked. I was bucked a lot of times. You lied to keep your job and to keep your friendship with Mandela. That's correct. During all of those isolating years on Robben Island, the prison guard said there was one view from the prison courtyard of the country Nelson Mandela loved, and that was the very top of Table Mountain here in Cape Town behind me, that Mandela would look to this view wondering if he'd ever be free. But Mandela was always preparing for that day. He asked the jailer to teach him Afrikaans, the language of the whites in power. There were essays assigned and the red pen that corrected them. And on the day Mandela was released, his speech was delivered in Afrikaans. Mandela famously said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. That's what he did. And that's what he was strive for, and that's what he was love for, and that's what he was fight for while he was in prison, to have people live in peace. The jailer, who became a trusted friend, now remembering Nelson Mandela. That most unlikely friend, the jailer standing on that hill with me in Cape Town, overlooking Robben Island and telling me that he'll never forget that bond they formed. And of course, Diane, that secret code, that little reference to his ear, that they were being bugged. His allegiance was to his loyal friend, Nelson Mandela. That's it. He kept teaching over and over again. Consider the possibility even your enemies can change. Change. Give them a chance to change. Thank you, David.